All right, so here's some more information um, regarding wind tunnel sizing and airflow speed measurements. Um, so here's a basic schematic of our wind tunnel. Um, the settling chamber um, has a larger cross-sectional area uh, than the test section so that we can increase the speed V1 to V2 in the test section. And we can um, measure uh, the speed in the test section based on um, a difference in fluid level in a pitot-static system. So for most of these calculations we're going to assume, as we've said in class, that uh, the Mach number in the test section is below um, 0.3 and therefore we can assume that the flow is incompressible and therefore we can assume that the density rho 1 and rho 2 are the same. So, depending on how much of this information that we know and what we would like to find out, there are three key equations that we need and we might need to combine them. So, do we have the continuity equation, Bernoulli's equation and the hydrostatic equation, the one um, which involves the difference in height in fluid level in the pitot-static system. So, let's have a quick look at an example. In this first example here, I have um, the speeds in both the settling chamber and the cross-sectional area um, denoted here, V1, V2, and they correspond to water levels H1 and H2. So I have three pieces of information and I need the fourth, right? In this case, V2. I'm gonna assume that my wind tunnel is at sea level. I have air in the um, in the wind tunnel, so I can use um, air density from the standard atmosphere table at sea level, and then I have um, a water level in the pitot-static system, so I need to use the density of water in the hydrostatic equation. So I start with Bernoulli's equation. I rearrange the left-hand side to give me P1 minus P2, so that I can use the hydrostatic equation, right, and therefore replace this side into here. Remembering, of course, that this row here, the one that comes from the hydrostatic equation, is the one associated with the water level in the pitot-static system, and the one associated with Bernoulli's equation is uh, corresponding to the density of air. So if I calculate that, um, obviously I've I've got rho, uh, sorry, I've got V2 corresponding to H2 and V1 corresponding to H1. So um, on the left hand side here I have H1 subtract H2. H1 is smaller than H2 so I'm going to get a negative here which will cancel with this negative over here. And therefore when I rearrange this equation for V2 I find that the um, flow speed in the test section has increased from 10 meters per second to 39 meters per second, which is approximately Mach 0.1. Now, just to prove to you that it doesn't matter which way around that you label these, because the negative sign takes care of it, I've basically done the same example again, but but uh, change the labels. So now the twos correspond to the settling chamber side and the ones correspond to the test section side. And if you use the same equation again, then obviously this difference now is positive because H1 minus H2 is um, positive because the, the water level is higher on the right hand side than the left hand side. So now this is positive, which means the whole left hand side is negative. But remember, of course, we're expecting V1 now, which is this, to be faster than this. So we're expecting this to be negative, and therefore this, this side is, is negative too. So the, the negative sign on the left-hand side will cancel with the negative sign on the right-hand side, and we end up with the same result. So as long as V1 corresponds to the water, so as long as the... <coughs> Um, the flow speed on this side corresponds to the water level on this side and vice versa and you label it correctly um, There's really not much that can go wrong with that calculation 
So now let's have a look at a different example, example number two as I'm calling it, where I have some different information. Um, so um, this time I know the cross-sectional areas of both the settling chamber and the uh, test section, and I know the water levels in both sides, and I would like to find out the flow velocity over here in the test section. So let's label that. So, so let's call this V2 is question mark, right? So this time, because I don't know the two flow velocities, in fact, I don't know either of them, I need to rearrange um, my equation slightly differently. So this time I start with the continuity equation so that I can write V1 in terms of V2. Well, why do we want to, why, why are we concerned with V1? Because we don't know V1 and we're not trying to find V1. Well, because when we um, write out the Bernoulli's equation, we can replace V1 here with our expression which involves V2, so now we have Bernoulli's equation only in terms of V2, which means that we can rearrange this whole thing for V2, right? Recalling, of course, we have this difference P1 minus P2, which is the left-hand side of the hydrostatic equation. So now I have an expression if I replace this into here, for V2 in terms of H1, H2, and A1 and A2, like that. So, um, remembering of course that the rows have to correspond to air and water respectively, I can use the cross-sectional areas this time, difference in water levels, to calculate the speed in the test section. This time, um, based on those dimensions, um, V2 comes out to almost 91 meters per second, which is still less than uh, Mach 0.3, and therefore our assumption that rho is constant um, is still valid. So then finally, let's have a look at example number three. Um, what happens if I would like to calculate the difference in water level based on the speeds, right? So this time I'm looking for a delta H. So again, this time I use Bernoulli's equation, rearrange it for delta H, right? So remember H1 minus H2 delta H. Um, in this particular case, we're expecting this difference to be negative, right? Because H1 is lower than H2. Um, so I rearrange that for delta H, plug in my values, and therefore I can calculate delta H, and as expected, it's a negative value. Um, so is that what we expect? Well, yes, of course. Um, Bernoulli's principle um, tells us that for a higher speed, we should have a, um, a lower pressure, and if we have a lower pressure, then we have less, um, let's say less force pushing down on the water level in this tube on this side than we do on this side, right? So lower speed, higher pressure, higher speed, lower pressure, so therefore we have, we're expecting the water level to be higher on this side than this side. So hopefully that clears up a few things and gives you a couple of extra examples.